I think it's nice to have a community of people that you don't feel alone or um, I don't know. I came from a largely Hispanic serving university. And then when I came here, it was very different, um, like completely different culture. And I miss my home, <laughs> um, but it's nice to see um, other people that are representing like the same ideals and ideas that you had. Um, so definitely seeing the same type of people that you identify with is just really nice. Yeah, I think so many of us URMs can develop imposter syndrome, uh, not so much because, you know, we, we lack confidence in ourselves, but because we, we keep getting or being told that we don't belong there or we feel that we don't belong there so being part of a community like you said sort of debunks those myths a little bit because you look at these like amazing people that are also your imps and you're like you know what uh, yeah they belong here so why don't I right um so I, I think it gives you strength um uh, PhD is it's is a difficult journey right um and I, I wouldn't want to make it harder by just being the only person that looks like me in a department, so it's nice to, mm -hmm. to be part of this community. We came from a similar background because, like, sometimes I worry about the background that I had, um, especially compared to like other people that I see in my department. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> they went to this amazing university, and um, like, I, I just went to the one in my hometown. <laughs> so it's nice to see people from everywhere sorry so your question was what we what do we need to succeed yeah just what supports do underrepresented students need to be successful especially mm -hmm. particularly within a stem field uh i feel like i personally needed um people that I trusted in specific positions of power that could help me navigate the university. Um, unfortunately, many universities are places where white supremacy reigns supreme. Um, and that's a very tough uh, problem to try and tackle head on. Um, but to at least have, yeah, I guess folks like peers to help support, but also um, knowing like faculty that are associated with the program and like Leslie herself, for example, knowing that they have positions of power and can help navigate through rough situations has also been at least particularly useful for my success as well. I, I, felt, I felt like what helped me and what I could see being helpful uh, sort of echoes what Joanna mentioned. Um, uh, in that having a support network to uh, validate decisions that I'm making or to give uh, guidance on decisions. And so that, that both came from fellow students, but also largely from the leadership of USIN. Um, and then in general, that's also been helpful for me throughout my PhD experience in my mentorship networks outside of USIN. Um, I've felt like a lot of the students at MIT who have had success have done some pretty gutsy things. Uh, and I think one of the things that comes with imposter syndrome adjacent feelings is I'm, I'm going to go walk, I'm going to walk the well trodden route. I'm not going to sort of make any waves. I'm going to try to, uh, check the boxes that I need to check to, finish, graduate, mm -hmm. um, and it seems like a lot of folks have the confidence, somehow it seems like a lot of folks identify risky things, risky decisions to make, and they have the confidence to go then make those risky decisions. Um, so I think it's helpful for URM students to have access to that confidence, to people who can say, um, yes, that risky decision you're considering is a good risky decision, or consider this other risky decision, like, this is something that I've seen other people do and it's helped them a lot. Uh, so that's been helpful for me. One, one example, maybe a concrete example being, I talked to Leslie about 
my qualifying exam process. Um, and I had to decide between sort of the standard route, which is to present the research that I did at the first part of my PhD. Um, and then the non-standard route would be to present research that I did for my master's. And uh, both are allowed for the pr- qualifying exam process, but usually people present their current research to make their advisors happy. And the big swing for me was to say, I'm just going to present a master's thesis research because my I didn't like what my advisor advised me to do for my for my research in a PhD program, but there was a lot to overcome and my advisor would be upset if I failed walls. Um, he'd be upset and potentially vindictive. Uh, so I needed a lot of guidance from Leslie to say, yeah, I think it's a reasonable. It sounds like your master's thesis work was good. Um, like that's a good decision to make. And that gave me the confidence to like make that decision and it worked out very well for me. But had I not made the decision, then I could have still failed falls because of the research that I had done not being what I wanted it to be. So yeah, just that confidence to make big decisions. And then just speaking about Leslie, you all in some way have named her as this great support, even a mentor for you all in many facets. Uh, What type of mentorship do you all receive as Sloan Scholars? In addition, how can it be improved? Lots of conversations with Leslie. Um, she's she is fantastic. She is absolutely great. I don't know how she has the time to do it while whilst being a like professor and I think like a department head or something in the ECS. Like 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 professor, but also like a like a you know a professor who hit the like Mario who hits the like the star and, and just, you know glows and stuff. She's not like a regular professor. She's like got a lot of responsibilities <laughs> on top of being a regular professor. So the fact that she has so much time to talk to everybody and use him. Um, and she attends all, almost all of the events that Houston plans. So yeah, conversations with her and also conversations with the, um, other leadership in Houston. Um, Ashley being one of the folks who I spoke with a lot. Um, just, yeah, those conversations were fantastic. There's also been a recent effort, I think started during lockdown earlier this year for a more formal, um, mentorship network. So different faculty that I think were again, recruited by Leslie, uh, from different departments that were, you know, willing to be official mentors for some of the UCM scholars. And then UCM scholars were interested in this mentorship program. They, I think they all got together over, uh, I think more, more than one Zoom event. And you would have these breakout rooms to try and get to know each other and, you know, see, if there are faculty that you would be interested in, in, you know, getting mentored by. But, I, you know, like, like Dr. Phil said, Leslie, I, yeah, I really don't know how she has the time. I, when I got that grade, I, you know, I, I cried in front of her. And I, and I know that other people have as well. Um, so it, it, it's good to try and remove the load from Leslie a little bit. So I appreciate that there's this more uh, structured mentorship program so that Leslie's not the only uh, mentor there. Um, yeah. Pay, pay Leslie more money. If, uh, if I, yeah. I don't know if she gets paid to yeah. do what she does, but if she does it, you should, she does a lot. You should, she should get yeah. paid. And, and like jokingly, jokingly pay her more money, but also like see, if she's not getting any sort of recognition for what she does, she does a lot. And I imagine that whoever is in her position at these other universities, um, like either they do a lot or they aren't able to do a lot because they because it's, there's like not that compensation there. If it's possible to make other people as as helpful as Leslie, um, like I imagine compensation would help that. I don't know if, if Leslie is getting compensated, but she does a ton. Uh, so yeah, if there's something that if there's like an award that you could give, any sort of recognition, any sort of compensation, right, that I think help the programs. Uh, to to keep great people like Leslie. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I wish that more faculty were m- more heavily involved. I know, yeah, efforts, as Joanna was saying, have been made to try and expand that and like get us connections to faculty through lunches so then we can like spin off our own like one-on-one connections with folks. Um, and I think that's great and I'm glad that's happening. Um, I just wish there were more Leslie's so that Leslie wasn't by herself doing all this work. Um, and then I would say the additional thing is I'd love if we could expand our like networking to folks outside of academia.